Armium. Hello everybody, I am Nico D. So today I've got something very special for you. So I am wearing my Armbian t-shirt today, but I am holding the Raspberry Pi 4. So this is special. Until now, Armbian never supported any Raspberry Pi device, but this is going to change now. So first of all, for those who are new to Armbian, what is Armbian? So Armbian is a build framework that can build images for a lot of single board computers like these, like the NanoPi M4, or like this one, the Old World N2+, or here I've got the Old World HC4. So Armbian can build images for all these single board computers. So it can build either Ubuntu based images or Debian based images. So there is for example Armbian Stretch, Armbian Bullseye and Armbian Buster. Those are all Debian based and there is also Armbian Bionic, Armbian Focal, Armbian Hirsute. Those are all Ubuntu based. So with the build environment you can build all these images for these single board computers. But Armbian also provides downloadable images on their download website. So now why would we use Armbian on a Raspberry Pi 4? So the first thing is for software compatibility. So if you are like me who have got a lot of other single board computers, it is easy to be able to run the same software, so the same operating system and also the same software. Another reason is of course reliability. Armbian is very reliable, Armbian is great for server tasks, so it is great to run all your server tasks. So like for example if you want to run an ass on your Raspberry Pi, then you can install Armbian Bullseye and then install OMV. Another reason why to use Armbian is of course because it is ARM64 versus the ARM HF, so 32 bit from Raspberry Pi OS. They do have got a 64-bit version, but this is still in beta. So Armbian can deliver ARM64 images for your Raspberry Pi. Do know these images are still test images, they are still not supported, so do not ask for support. I will try to put a link down here so you can try them. So Orpardini has built them for me, so thank you very much for all your work. So he is an Armbian developer, but he is not the maintainer for the Raspberry Pi 4. So Armbian also searches for a maintainer for Raspberry Pi. So if you want to learn a bit more about the Linux architecture and how Armbian works, please become Armbian maintainer for the Raspberry Pi 4. So I have done a lot of tests on these images, I've done a lot of benchmarks, so not everything works yet, but for server tasks it is already perfect. So one thing that doesn't work yet on the Raspberry Pi 4 with Armbian is onboard sound. It is either glitchy or it doesn't work. The Wi-Fi works on the latest image I've gone, but on the previous images it didn't work. So it is already great to use for server tasks. You can install desktops on it. I tried some desktops. They do work pretty well, but it isn't the meaning to support desktop on Raspberry Pi 4. There are a lot of images for that, other images. So now let's go and take a look to Armbian for the Raspberry Pi 4. Here we go! So here I've got an Armbian Jammy image for the Raspberry Pi 4. So Jammy is the up and coming Ubuntu, so Ubuntu 2204. So it hasn't been released yet. Again, this is a test image and I like to see the bleeding edge. I like to know what is coming. So all I need to do is write this to an SD card. So I do this in Linux with GNOME disks. So sudo GNOME disks and select the SD card and select the image and burn it. One thing you have to know, this is clocked at 2 GHz, so it is overclocked. So you do need a good cooling solution for your Raspberry Pi 4 or just uncomment the overclock in config.txt by putting a hashtag in front of it. I am using an SD to USB 3 adapter, this way I get a lot better performance. So with the onboard SD card reader on the Raspberry Pi 4 I get up to 45 megabytes per second, while with the adapter I get up to 90 megabytes per second, so that is double the performance just for a $5 adapter. I'm also using a rather big heatsink on my Raspberry Pi and also a 5V fan. 
So now let's boot Armbian on the Raspberry Pi 4. I must say I was pretty stoked when I saw this for the first time. I use Armbian for a long time and I use Armbian on many devices, but on the Raspberry Pi I couldn't use Armbian. And now Armbian also works on the Raspberry Pi 4, so that is awesome. I asked for it for a long time, but nobody wanted to do it. And then Orpardini let me know that he had an Armbian built for the Raspberry Pi. So I was quite amazed. So all I need to do is type two times my new root password, then choose my default command shell, so bash, and then my username, and again create a password. We are using Armbian, so there is Armbian config to set up everything. I am using Wi-Fi, so I will use this to connect my Wi-Fi. Armbian config can be used for a lot of things. To set your keyboard layout, to set your network settings, to set your CPU frequency, but also to install software. There we can install a lot of server apps, so Samba, Cups, Plex. Also for OMV you can do that over there when you are using a Debian image. So this is very handy. So let's get out of Armbian config and do an apt update and apt upgrades. I'm logged in as root so I don't need to use sudo. Now just for fun let's do a 7-zip benchmark. So 7zb but it isn't installed yet so I'm gonna install it first. So apt install p7zip-full and then again 7zb. And now let's open edgetop to see what is happening. It is weird, you can't see the CPU frequency. Normally you can see the CPU frequency, maybe it is because it is a newer version from Jammy. I can already say that the performance is great from the Raspberry Pi with Armbian. In some tasks it even can perform as good as the RK3399 with its 6 cores. But of course it doesn't come close to anything like the Oldroid N2 Plus or Kadas Fim 3. Now let's try out a desktop on it. So I had tried the Mati desktop but not the Ubuntu Mati desktop. But there was no difference in both, they both didn't work very well. So all I needed to do to install my desktop was add install ubuntu-mati-desktop. Once that was installed, I can start it with start x. So here we are in the Mati desktop. You see that the application button isn't working on the left top corner. I can add it, but once I reboot, it will be disappeared again. So the Mati desktop isn't that good. Once I reboot it also doesn't boot into my desktop. So for that I install LightsDM and LightsDM GTK Greeter. Once that is installed and I reboot then it will boot into a desktop.
So now let's try out some other desktops. So like for example Kubuntu, so that is the KDE desktop. I can also say that the XFCE4 desktop works pretty well, but there are a few little bugs, like some fire icons that don't show. Do know these are not the Armbian desktops. I can't install the Armbian desktop because this is too new. So now just log out. And here I can select my desktop. So let's try the Plasma desktop. So that is KDE. This works very sluggish. It is very slow. Just not usable. And the first boot takes a long time. So when I press the application button, it takes a few seconds before it shows the applications. And when I want to go out of it, it takes a long time to get out of it again. So it isn't really usable. So let's go into the settings. And that also takes a long time. And there we can go to our video settings. Where is it? Display and monitor. And there we can choose OpenGL 3.1. This is a little bit better. It works a little bit faster, but it is still slow. As you see, it is faster, but it is still sluggish. As a test, I installed Caden Live to see how well that works. But that also was very slow. As last I tried the Lubuntu desktop and this works really great. It looks great. It has improved a lot in looks. It feels good. It doesn't seem like there are any obvious bugs. I hadn't tried this desktop in a long time and I'm actually amazed. It now looks more like XFCE4 than what it used to look like. Do know everything that I show here doesn't matter at all. Because if Armbian comes with desktops it will come with its own desktops and not with these desktops. But you can of course install them. I just found it fun to see what desktops worked well and to see what's new. Caden Life was a lot smoother to work with than on KDE, which is a bit surprising, but also not. I then also installed some browsers, so Firefox and Chromium. And I must say that the video playback is very good. I didn't expect this, so 1080p video playback was perfect. Sound doesn't work, so this is one thing that can be worked on. But otherwise it is really great to have this on the Raspberry Pi. Armbian for the Raspberry Pi. It was kind of a meme thing, it is kind of a joke, but it is cool to have it. And here some benchmarks, so not much can be said from the benchmarks. You can see that Hirsut doesn't perform that well, but Impish performs a lot better. I knew that from other tests on other boards, and this also proves it. 7-zip reacts very weirdly when you test it on ARM HF boards, so you cannot compare this with the other results. If you then look to the NicoD Blender benchmark, then that is so much slower. So even at 2 GHz it is as fast as Bullseye ARM64 at 1.5 GHz. Something interesting that I can tell you from the benchmarks is that with Raspberry Pi OS Bullseye ARM64 Blender crashed at 2 GHz and also Ubuntu 21.10 crashed at 2 GHz while Armbian never crashed at 2 GHz with the Blender benchmark. 
With Jamie Blender didn't work and with Armbian Bullseye it also didn't work so I couldn't see if it worked then. But Armbian did look to be overall more stable. So that's it for today. I hope you all liked my video. Thank you all for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. See you all later. Bye.